guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. After going through and watching some of my videos, I realized that I make a lot of my intros in my car. Anyway, but if you're new to my channel, what is up? All of my social media is linked down below along with my other veterinary vlogs if you're interested in checking any of that out. I posted a video a while back and it was my AVMA like clinical tasks video um, that I had to do for school and submit for a grade. So yeah. So this is our ProSite machine where we run our CVCs. So general maintenance on this machine is there is a stain kit that's located right here in this compartment that we change out usually every couple months. The machine itself actually lets us know when it needs to be changed out. And then down below the machine, we have the machine's reagent kit that we also change out every couple months. Other than just cleaning the exterior of the machine, we do run a rinse cycle on it to just clean the inside compartments of the machine as well. And then also quality control is run on it every couple of months as well. So when a monthly rinse cycle needs to be run on the ProSite, it does alert us with a notification. It just tells us to dispense two mils of the IDEX cleaning solution, or you can make your own using a 5% bleach solution. We already have a 5% bleach solution already made up, and we use 20 mils of water and one mil of bleach to get our 5% solution. So all I'm gonna do is take two mils of the solution, and put it into a clean container. I'm gonna leave the lid off and then place it into the machine and just press the button and that's all you have to do for a rinse cycle. In the background, you can see my coworker on his cell phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so once I've gotten my blood sample, I'm gonna take my heartworm test. Just open it up. And this is what the test looks like. So the heartworm test comes with a conjugate and I'm gonna do four drops of this conjugate. One, two, three, four. And then take three drops of my sample. And I just invert the sample a couple of times to mix it thoroughly. I'm gonna take my sample and put it right here in this hub. And it usually takes 30 to 60 seconds for the sample to travel down before it is snapped. Once the sample reaches this circle, I'm going to snap the test. I'm gonna let this sit for eight minutes and we'll come back and read the results. So for my serological testing, I'm gonna be using our catalyst on this particular patient. My doctor just wants electrolytes ran on him. So I'm gonna take a serum sample. I'm just gonna fill the sample cup with the required amount of serum. And all I do to run a blood chemistry on this machine is I open up the drawer, I place my sample right here in the sample container, and then I take my electrolytes. And I'm gonna place the slides right here push it in and then press the button and that is gonna run my electrolyte test. So once my blood chemistries are done processing, it comes to this machine where you can view the results. It will also automatically print out as well. So for these electrolytes, this is my reference range. I have a low, normal, and high. So this guy, his electrolytes are a little bit low. It does have the exact numbers and the reference intervals and then also a visual scale here. When dealing with a rabies suspect, only vaccinated personnel is allowed to come into direct contact contact with the patient. Also, affected animals can only be handled by a person that is wearing gloves, a surgical mask, and protective eyewear. After handling a rabies suspect, it's very important that you wash your hands thoroughly. To test for rabies, all rabies suspects have to be decapitated, except for bats. The specimen should be placed in a watertight container, such as a heavy plastic bag that is tightly secured with a tight-fitting lid to prevent fluid leakage. Then that container should be placed into another larger waterproof container. Then that container needs to be placed into a, another waterproof unbreakable container and the space between the two containers need to be packed with ice coolers so the specimen is in a different container than the container that the ice packs are in. Leaking or improperly packed specimens will not be accepted. Once the head has properly been packaged then the rest of the body should be cremated. All right guys that is it for this video. Thank you so so much for watching. If you liked it don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!